This is a low-end budget PC I purchased from my daughter so she can play Roblox, Minecraft, and hopefully get into other titles. My friend shipped it to me taken apart because it was dusty as heck. I cleaned everything to the best of my ability, reapplied thermal paste to CPU as well as GPU. I did not install the CD drive, and now it won't start or post or anything, not a single beep or fan movement. I don't know what to do. I was looking forward to this PC since it was cheap and I already have a mouse and keyboard ready for her to go. It's a Ryzen 5 2400G with a GTX 1060, 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte hard disk drive. This is that viewer's broken gaming PC and uh, sounds like we've got our work cut out for us this time. This is obviously an HP pre-built. I'm not sure if any parts have been swapped out since this viewer obtained it, but uh, it is something that I'm a bit concerned about, not because it's an SI or something that was pre-assembled, but because there are some proprietary things in here that uh, will be difficult to work around. I'm talking, of course, about the motherboard. HP couldn't help themselves. They have literally baked front IO into the right side of this motherboard, meaning this case and board are more or less symbiotic. You're not gonna be able to replace one without the other because these ports line up directly with cutouts in the case. Same goes for rear IO. You can see that uh, there's no rear IO shield. The case literally has cutouts that match the rear IO ports on this board. It's super weird. Um, it's something that's gonna be a bit frustrating to work around, but that's what you get with a lot of these pre-builds. This power supply is also shaped a bit weird. It is 80 plus gold certified, which I did not expect. Total output is about 310 watts, but uh, yeah, the shape is just odd. And it's just another reason I think to ditch this case if it comes to it, if we need to replace the motherboard. Um, we'll have three things to replace, right? The board, the case, the power supply, the list just keeps going on and on. But we knew what we were getting ourselves into here. This isn't a surprise. It sounds a bit counterintuitive, but in my experience, systems that refuse to power on at all are typically easier to troubleshoot. So uh, maybe we won't have to spend all day on this, but only time will tell. Are you ready? Stay with me. If you're sick of seeing that same Activate Windows watermark over and over, head on over to VIP SCD Key, where they have Windows 10 and 11 Pro OEM keys at a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say goodbye to the watermark. And be sure to use your offer code SKGS for that sweet discount. Now, before we try powering this on, I do want to say this combination of hardware is actually pretty decent for an entry-level rig. A 1060 is still perfectly viable if you can find them for decent prices, and a 6 gig variant. Uh, it's probably the only one I would look at, but uh, you can find these for well under $100 now. And a 2400G will also pull its own weight. It is an APU. You can technically run it as a standalone graphics processor as well, although you'll probably regret that. Something that should be on everybody's upgrade list is a replacement storage drive. Hard disk drives for boot devices are no bueno in 2023. Heck, even in very bare bones budget rigs, you can find one terabyte SSDs for like under 40 bucks today. And that will drastically improve not only your boot times, but also your program load times. I'm not gonna make a habit of replacing everything that comes into the studio for obvious reasons. I don't have like parts that just grow on trees around here, but I just wanted to point these out in case you are wondering or in case the viewer is wondering if he's watching. Now remember, this system apparently doesn't power on at all. That should be fairly easy to deduce. We've got power connected. The power strip is now on and uh, nothing. So same strip is uh, where this monitor is plugged in. Obviously we're getting power here, but we have no sign of life coming from this pre-built. Hmm. All right. Let's see if there's anything obvious inside that we can quickly fix. Let's see, it looks like we can bypass this power button. This board looks like it controls not only the button itself, but also the LEDs. I think we can just disconnect this and then jump it on the motherboard side. Nothing. All right, so I'm willing to bet at this point the power supply is kaput. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case because these units are typically fairly cheap. This is how OEMs keep their costs down and their margins up. Now there are unfortunately some uh, unique connectors running from this unit and you can see here where they connect on this board. So we don't have a 24 pin. Traditional 24 pin does not exist here. We have a four pin and then a SATA power, it looks like a SATA power pin uh, or a little uh, header there. And we have another four pin up top. That's gonna be eight pin EPS. So I don't think without some serious adapters, we're gonna be able to run a traditional power supply to this board. So what I suspect we'll have to do is gut the current rig, take everything except for the motherboard out and then power it on with a different power supply and a different motherboard 
in presumably a different case. So it's about what we expected. Physically, from what I can see, this graphics card looks to be okay. I do wanna test this independent of everything else in the system, just to rule it out as a potential culprit. I don't expect it'll prevent the system from powering on at all, unless there's a serious dead short somewhere. But seeing as that this is one of the more expensive components in the rig, I think it's safe to rule this out as quickly as possible. Same goes for these DRAM modules. Even though DDR4 is quite cheap today, it takes literally seconds to verify that these are still working. The last thing is the CPU under this cooler here. I'm gonna strip this from the board. We'll also test this independent of everything else in a known working AM4 motherboard. Geez, no good when the cold plate of the cooler used doesn't cover the entire IHS. Thankfully though, the CPU does appear to be in good shape. This is a Ryzen 5 2400G and the pins at the back look really good. Nothing bent, nothing missing. And for what it's worth, same goes for the socket. I've set up a makeshift workbench here. We've got an A320M, which I chose intentionally because uh, well, I wanted to make sure we didn't run a newer board that could have potentially nuked 2000 G series APU support because of like the size of the BIOS chips and whatnot. Uh, we've got a single four gig stick of known and working DDR4, the board again, known and working, the power supply as well. The only thing in here from his rig is the 2400G. I'm not gonna bother putting the cooler on, I just wanna check for power and maybe a quick post. Let's see if we have anything power on the board and we're gonna jump the power pins here. But there won't be any real indication, as far as I know, that this system is on since there are no LEDs and there are no fans or anything. However, I do feel the CPU warming up, which is a good sign that tells me it's receiving power. Okay, I don't want to leave it on for much longer. Let's check with a cooler. This should do the trick. It's not fastened to the board, but I'll just apply pressure manually. Again, don't try this at home unless you know what you're doing. This is just temporary. Round two. This time we should see some sign of life from the fan, there we go. So the fan is spinning. Got decent pressure on that. We're just, there it is. Wow, that was super fast. That's literally all we need to see. I'm gonna power it back off. That's awesome then. One of his three major components is confirmed working. Now we're going to add his DDR4. A few moments later. And would you look at there? I skipped ahead a bit, but we've also got his graphics card installed. So all three major components are working. Not only does the system power on, but it also posts to the BIOS. So good news there. Uh, we just now have the question of whether the power supply or the motherboard, the originals, are bad. Maybe both are bad. Now, even with a replaced CPU, graphics card, and RAM, basically half of this rig, we still cannot get this to power on. And because I don't have a replacement OEM power supply that's compatible with the specific motherboard, and just one of the reasons why I tend to stay away from these pre-builds, um, I really cannot go much further than this. I suppose the last thing we could check other than clearing the CMOS, which we've already done off camera, um, that didn't fix the no power issue, um, is maybe check the battery. Typically a dead motherboard battery won't prevent the system from powering on. In my experience, it depends on the board, but uh, we can at least rule that out. That's really the last thing I've got in my arsenal. Um, we're just gonna have to deal with not knowing which is actually the problem. I would be willing to bet it's the power supply. Maybe the power supply also killed the motherboard. Who really knows? Let's check voltage here. This should be around three volts. Ooh, 2.3-ish. That's not good. And let's see, this battery is from the board we just tested with the working components. So we know this battery should be good. And yeah, that's three volts. That's what it should be. So this actually could fix the issue? I'm not holding my breath on this one, but it is worth a shot. 12 seconds later. Nope, just as before, nothing from the power button and even manually jumping, still nothing. So yeah, I still think the primary culprit is the power supply. Maybe the low battery voltage was a result of the system sitting so long unpowered. Maybe it was sitting in a very hot, humid environment or a cold one. But this power supply just looks so sketchy, so dirty. I mean, look how much nasty crap there is in the back of this unit. It's pretty gross. And these units, like I said, they're so cheap. HP loves to cut corners on power supplies. And they're not the only ones. Dell does this. Uh, Lenovo does this with their OEMs as well. It's very rare that you find a pre-built that's from a large integrator like this 
that includes a decently reliable power supply. I do have another HP on hand, by the way. Some of you might have seen our most recent $40 mystery PC build. That HP has another proprietary power supply in it. However, those connectors are different from these connectors, and these connectors are still different from the standard ATX connectors you'll find on most power supplies today. It's, it's a super frustrating thing to run into as a troubleshooter, having to work around these proprietary connections. HP wants you to stay funneled in their ecosystem. They want you to have to go to their reps to repair things, to replace things. Super annoying. This is again another reason why I don't generally recommend them. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna scrap the case. We're gonna scrap actually the hardest drive as well, which I didn't even bother testing. It's likely not causing a short because we still can't get it to power on even with it disconnected. But uh, I'm gonna scrap that as well because it's just older. I don't wanna put an operating system on that. I'm also gonna scratch the motherboard just because I really have no choice here and the power supply. We're gonna take the things that we've already tested and confirmed working and throw them into a new, I think much cleaner, better looking rig overall. I'll also give this back to the viewer. He can do whatever he wants with it. Probably, uh, probably recycle it. Are you ready? Let's get to building a new system. Whew. We have practically rebuilt a PC from the ground up, and you'll notice I actually reused the A320 board from our test bench. It is not a high-end board by any means, but it's actually the only board I currently have that still supports the 2400G. Still better than the HP specific one we were using before, and I even threw on a Noctua low-profile cooler to boot. You'll notice I also stuffed in a very premium Be Quiet Straight Power 12 750 watt power supply. This is an 80 plus platinum unit, and it is definitely overkill for this combination of hardware. With CPU and GPU wise, we're looking at maybe 250-ish, 300 watts under full load and we've got more than double that in this unit here. The, the point was to just give this viewer something that they could very easily rehash, relocate into a newer build down the line. 750 watts should be plenty for any reasonable combination of hardware. And uh, not only is it a high enough wattage for the foreseeable future, but also fully modular. It's a, a beefier unit. It's, it's definitely larger than the status quo, but it's gonna run extremely quiet. Again, great efficiency. You have an epic warranty through Be Quiet as well. So uh, wanted to make sure they were set up for several years with this power supply. The other thing that I added that I haven't mentioned yet is a one terabyte NVMe. This was definitely needed, I think. It's gonna help make the system much snappier than it otherwise would have been on a three and a half inch hard disk drive. This is for all the marbles. I'm not sure why I squeezed everything into the far corner of this desk. Here is power on. Whew, that is a good sign. Um, much better than Again, where we started, I expect we'll get a post because this is basically just the test bench reassembled in a case. I just remembered our clock has probably reset because I did have the CMOS battery out, but uh, yeah, there we go. That is good to see. I do have our uh, installation tool, so we should actually load into Windows Media, and yep, here we are. And that's great. We can see our NVMe here, unallocated space. Nothing was on this drive. We never used it before. We're gonna go ahead and click Next and let Windows do its thing. Well. That was fun. Uh, I'm sure some of you are gonna be complaining about the combination of hardware. You know what, Greg, well, you already built half the system brand new again. Why don't you just upgrade everything? Again, that's not the point. I wanna stress it's not the point. The things that have been confirmed working 
are back in here. I just cannot test any further because I do not have proprietary HP equipment. I don't have replacement HP power supplies. Apparently there's a five volt versus 12 volt discrepancy with some of those units as well. So I could potentially damage things even more if I tried to use a traditional power supply. And of course I don't have another motherboard that's shaped the way that theirs is. I just, I, I get it. If you're mass producing like thousands or tens or hundreds of thousands of these, I mean, sure, why not? Just design all boards exactly the same to fit that specific case, but it definitely uh, impacts things in the way of troubleshooting later and buyers should be aware of this. For now though, glad the system's up and running. Already shared uh, the findings with the owner and he is super happy with the way it looks, of course. It's just, it looks so much better, so much more modern and still plenty capable in 2023 especially some of the games he mentioned, like Minecraft. If you guys enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you have not already. And uh, check out some of our relevant links in the video description, including some of my troubleshooting gear, as well as where you can support us on Patreon and join our free Discord server. Dang, I nailed that in the first take. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.